Hey everyone, I'm really sorry for the delay in videos lately since I've been trying to keep up with college life and development on my game called Earthward, which you should definitely check out if you like RPGs or just video games in general. I'm also really sorry for the audio quality once again, I still don't have uh, my actual microphone set up and all my roommates are currently in uh, our apartment right now, so I've actually gone to my school and I've gone into uh, one of the lecture rooms, which is why there's so much reverb right now on my voice, so just stick with me here. But today we're going to quickly go over some commonly asked questions, and I'm going to do my best to answer them. So the first one is, uh, I'm having problems with my mod. Whenever I build, I get X error. What do I do? Well, if it's simple, I might just respond to your comment, but if not, please join the Discord because it's impossible to communicate via YouTube comments, and other people there in the Discord can help you other than just me. So the second question is, how do I get my code to autocomplete as shown in the videos? Well, this is something called IntelliSense. It allows the computer to guess what you're going to do and gives you some very helpful autocomplete options. To enable this, you have to go into your tools of Visual Studio, then go to Options, and then Text Editor and Advanced. And you can go ahead and find the autocomplete option uh, over there. And I'd also recommend going to the C Sharp options and enabling Parameter Information, Auto List Members, and Automatic Brace Completion. You won't regret it and it'll save you many headaches. So the next question is, will you create a boss tutorial? Okay, I get asked this one a lot, uh, but the answer is I probably won't be doing a boss anytime soon. Not to say that it won't happen, but I have other priorities first. A lot of people who are maybe new to modding uh, often want to start by making bosses, which is perfectly fine, albeit incredibly ambitious. They're going to be clueless unless they actually understand how to code and how Terraria's codebase works. Instead of trying to bend the code to your will, maybe try conforming to it for a little while, until you understand how it works. Nobody wants to fight a boss that's a carbon copy of the Eye of Cthulhu. Then again, I'm thinking like a game developer again. It's ultimately about fun. I mean, that's the whole reason for modding something in the first place. If you want to make a boss that pretty much works exactly like the Eye of Cthulhu, it's actually pretty easy. You can probably just go over to the example mod, which I'll also put uh, in the description. It has a bunch of very helpful resources for people who are new to modding or maybe want some more uh, detailed code descriptions of what a function or parameter does. But you could probably just copy an already existing boss's default properties and then add your own sprites on top of it, and voila, you would have another version of the Eye of Cthulhu. Next question is, why are my sprites too small? So this one's actually pretty interesting. There's a common technique in pixel art games, uh, especially ones that use rotation of the pixels, uh, because when you actually rotate a pixel, think about that. You can't really rotate a pixel. I mean, a pixel is basically the smallest thing that a screen can display in the first place. So what Terraria does is it forces you to scale up your images by 200%, meaning that once you're finished drawing your sprite, you have to scale it up by 200%. This is so the rotated pixels in the game don't look as blurry. It's not a big deal, you just have to remember to do it. How often will there be new tutorials? Well, probably around one a week once I get my equipment set up, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm currently using this really awful USB mic uh, in one of my university's little, I don't know if you could call it a studio room, but uh, it's more of like a, a workspace, and so there's a lot of natural reverb in here I'm starting to notice. I do want to start branching out to game development or music tutorials though at some point. Uh, I think I have a lot of experience with that stuff now too, so it would be really awesome uh, to be able to help some people out with that stuff. Granted, that won't be a main focus of the channel, but I think it's worth trying out. So we have another question, and I also get this one a lot. A lot of people often uh, have this error. Uh, my mod is crashing without me doing any coding. What do I do? This usually indicates a misconfigured installation of Visual Studio. Make sure you have the right version installed and the right packages installed. I put a link in the description of this video to a very good article on how to set up Visual Studio for Tmod Loader. So if you're having any problems with this kind of stuff, make sure to please go and check that out first. So another question is, what should I make sprites with? Well, a sprite is the undisputed best pixel art program. It has a ton of functionality, is easy to use, and allows you to export as a vertical sprite sheet, which means you can start drawing and animating in a GIF format and then export it as a vertical sprite sheet, which for Terraria, let me tell you, is going to save you a lot of time. You can use a free extension of a sprite if you want, called Libre Sprite, or you can just buy a sprite for a cheap price, which I think is something like $5, well, at least that's how it was for me. Or, or you can just decompile Aceprite yourself and get the software for free. But that's more work, and you also want to support the creators. If that all sounds like too much trouble for you, you can also just keep going on with Piskel, which is a free online pixel art program, and it still works perfectly fine. 
but it just means that when you want to create vertical sprite sheets, you're going to have to do just a little bit more work. And as a game developer, I have to say, a sprite is definitely worth it. So another question is, uh, I have no idea how to code. It all feels impossible to understand. How can I follow along? Well, after this video, I'm going to make a tutorial on coding basics in C Sharp, which does sound a little bit ambitious considering that there are probably a lot of people who have done it before and maybe explained it better than I could. But the difference in mine is that it's going to be focused on actually C Sharp for Terraria modding, meaning that we're going to learn how to use C Sharp in conjunction with modding Terraria, which I've noticed that a lot of tutorials just kind of talk about the concepts and all this other stuff but without ever actually putting it into practice in a way that you can actually use it for something. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, in that series. And I'm doing this because I've noticed a lot of people asking questions um, about basic coding things, which is per which is perfectly fine. I want uh, everyone to know that there's nothing wrong with not understanding code, especially if you're new, and especially uh, if you have zero experience with it at all. Uh, I know I would have definitely benefited from having a base understanding of programming uh, going into Terraria modding, so there's no judgment coming from me. I'm just here to help you guys make a mod. Where can I find source files? So after about every other tutorial, I'll usually upload uh, the updated code and PNG files on my GitHub, which is linked in the description. So you can feel free to just go over there, study it, or just straight up take it and use it for yourself. Can I follow your 1.3 videos even though I'm coding in 1.4 Terraria? Yes, you can. There's not too many differences between the two, besides some syntax changes and new parameters for some of the functions. I actually did a live stream where I converted our tutorial mod from 1.3 to 1.4, and it only took me about 20 minutes. Oh, okay, this is a very specific question. What does the percent operator do in code? The percent operator allows us to format characters we print to the screen, among many other things. I can actually show you an example of this. This code right here is written in pure C, not C sharp, not C++, just C. Imagine if I wanted to print an integer uh, called, let's say, x. We'll set up x equal to 5, and if I try and print x in quotation marks, well, I can't do that because an integer isn't a character value. We'll just get the actual letter x not the number 5. So what exactly do we do? So what we have to do is we have to convert that integer into a string first and then print it. Or we can use the percent operator. The percent operator tells us what kind of number we want to print on the screen. Percent %i and percent %d are for integers, percent %f is for floats, and so on and so forth. If we say percent %i in quotation marks and then type our integer as the second parameter, so percent %i and then x, you can see that it ends up printing our integer. There's a thousand different things you can do with this, so much so that it could be a video in itself. I'm not even going to try to explain it. So the last question is, how do I make my mod crossplay with another mod? This one isn't so easy. In fact, it's labeled as an expert level difficulty on the Tmod Loader wiki. Yeah, I know, they actually have difficulty levels for certain things. I didn't know they did that either. It's kind of weird. The link will be in the description if you really want to give it a shot, but don't be surprised if you are having trouble understanding some things. And that's all for now. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll add them into the next video Q&A. Also make sure to check out my main channel and support my work over on Patreon so I can continue making videos. As a university student, I am now broke. And even though I'm broke, I'm still trying to raise $1,000 to fund an animated trailer for my game Earthward. That would honestly be a dream come true. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.